Microplastics are present in ocean waters, in fresh water, in sediments, and even in the terrestrial realm. And more and more research is showing that uh, these microplastics are getting incorporated into organisms that inhabit those environments. Research also shows that um, microplastics aren't necessarily good for the things that are consuming them. Our goal is to figure out if we have them in our oysters and clams, uh, and if so, you know, are they at problematic levels. We're also trying to determine not only the concentrations, but the types of plastics that are in uh, razor clams and oysters, if any. This research is funded by Oregon Sea Grant. In terms of types of microplastics, there are several different categories that a lot of studies have put them into. You can have fibers, which are actually the most common, and those enter the environment through laundering clothing. Uh, another category are fragments. Large plastics can degrade into smaller plastics because of wave action, uh, physical degradation, or UV. Um, there are also foams, so you know, classic styrofoam, those break up into different pieces. Um, filaments, those can be broken down from things like fishing line or nylon rope, which, you know, if, if fishing gear is lost out in the ocean, that can create marine debris that can break into millions of tiny microplastics. And um, films, those can be things like plastic bags that break up into small pieces. Uh, and then the last category would be microbeads. Um, and those are manufactured intentionally and are often put into uh, cleansing products like facial creams and body washes and a whole suite of other things like that. And when those are used in the shower, they wash through the wastewater system out into the environment. So presumably, organisms would ingest these. Uh, oysters and clams are both filter feeders. And they're sort of indiscriminate feeders, so they may take in a piece of plastic, either a fragment or a fiber or something else and not necessarily be able to eject it back out. So we're trying to figure out, again, what the concentration of microplastics is in the tissues and then in the gut of the Pacific oysters and the razor clams. Um, we're also trying to see if there's a geographical gradient. So that's why we're having nine razor clam sites and five oyster sites along the Oregon coast to see if there are hot spots. Another goal of the project is to determine if there's a sort of temporal component in the differences of microplastic concentrations. So we've sampled in the spring of 2017 and then again in the summer to see if there's a difference. We selected oysters and razor clams for this study because we're really trying to get a good picture of as much of the coast as we can. Uh, razor clams live in the sandy beach environment and oysters are grown more in the estuarine environment. The other reason that these species were selected is because they're consumed by people. Once we've collected all of our samples, they're transported to Portland State and taken to our lab. And what we do in our lab is we take biological measurements such as length and width and mass and then we shuck the organisms and put them in the freezer until we're ready to really start processing. So the next step after we take them out of the freezer is we do this digestion uh, in potassium hydroxide, which essentially dissolves all of the organic tissue and leaves the plastics. What you see is essentially clear liquid where the organism once was, and then some sediments in the bottom. That is then analyzed under a microscope. Ultimately, we're hoping that this study brings awareness to Oregonians and even visitors to the state of Oregon that plastics uh, that, that we use in our daily lives make their way into the environment. We're also hoping that our partners like Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife and other state agencies might take this information to learn about hotspots for microplastics to address the problem.